Well, what does everyone think about that? Uh, come on, Makoto, let's hurry up and get all this over with. Cthulhu <laughs> Uh, what are you saying? Oh, it's an ancient chant. Who simply is kind of incantation? You never read, um... Uh, why am I blanking on his name? You know, the guy, you know, the guy that, you know, may allow, like... Those type of horror... Stories, you know, involving Cthulhu. Uh, Lovecraft. Yeah, Lovecraft. That's the name. HP... Oh, was it HP Lovecraft? Is that the name? I always forget initials. I'm also really bad with names. But anyway. And that's why I said shut up. Uh, let's, let us hurry up and check the locker. The sooner we do that, the sooner we put this ridiculous story to rest. Yeah, Nina says she opened the locker. We better check that out. Open the locker and saw a pale outline. The locker. Who's going up? And what about you? What do you think? Yeah. If Hina saw something as she claims, there might be something here in the locker. Well. Oh, I didn't mean to click on her again. No, no, okay. I did click on the on the right thing. Anyway, um, is this a locker? There is something in here. Hmm. Inside the locker is a laptop. What's something like that doing here? No. I remember seeing this. Oh, that's right. I saw it in the library before. It looks like a laptop. It's pretty old, covered in dust. It's broken, but. Nothing happened when you press the power button. Mm. But how did the laptop get from the library to here? And I guess it's in sleep mode. But the power is definitely on. Huh? But I thought it was broken. Alright, see ya. See ya, MILF. Supremacy. <laughs> anyway. But I thought it was broken. I will bet that Chihiro fixed it. After all, he was known as the ultimate programmer. I mean, that's kind of... I mean, well... If you're a programmer, it doesn't necessarily mean you're good at fixing computers, you know? I feel like those are two separate skills, but oh well. You know how it is? I mean, that's how it is in uh, any kind of like story, you know? Not just anime, but like any kind of fiction. Like a movie or whatever. It's like you have this guy or I mean girl or guy, whatever. This person that's like a hacker, you know? They're like a computer nerd. And somehow they just know everything about computers from programming to like make like building computers to like like somehow they also know how to like fix machines. They just do everything, I guess, somehow. I don't know. More importantly, Hina, you said you saw a green light, yes? Surely you did not mistake that light of the monitor for a ghost? I'm surprised you're able to dress yourself in the morning. <laughs> That's a little rude. Oh man, if I had the love's clueless girl's attribute, I would have fallen in love big time just now. I'm so glad I don't have it. Well, I didn't really expect to find a freaking laptop inside a freaking locker, okay? Wow, language. Asahina. No. Hey, it's okay. I mean, anyone can make a mistake like that. As a matter of fact, one time I thought I spotted a gray alien, but it turned out to be a tadpole. Don't compare what happened to me to one of your stupid delusions. And don't be mean. I was just trying to make you feel better. If I get all depressed forever now. Uh, but listen, isn't this really strange? What's this laptop doing in here? Maybe someone hid it here. If that's the case, we found it pretty easily. Whoever put it here, I don't think they were trying to hide it from us. Huh? What do you mean? No. Have you noticed? There's one big difference between this room and all the others. There's a difference. There's no surveillance camera. Surveillance camera. So, yeah. Precisely. There's no camera in here, which means this is this one spot where the mastermind is blind. <gasps> so you're saying someone put the laptop here so the mastermind wouldn't know about it? So, yeah. And what Hina saw was in the ordinary glow of a computer screen. It was the figure of Chihiro, shining pale green. No. I think it'd be best if we investigate this laptop in a little more detail. Well, let's do that. Click on it. It's just like Kyokyo said, the display isn't on, but the laptop definitely has power. Yeah. So first of all, we have to wake it up. Right. I started hitting random buttons on the keyboard. <laughs> you don't need to do that, you just gotta like, 
I mean, it's a laptop, so you just touch the, the the mouse pad or whatever. It was not really a mouse, I guess. What do you call it, actually? I guess I guess you just call it touchpad. And the display instantly began to glow a pale green. There are a bunch of different little icons on the desktop. Yeah. There, the icon on the far left. What is it? It says Alter Ego. Well, that's funny. You know, I, I don't I don't know if I put this on YouTube. Well, I, I will put this on YouTube, but I don't know if I'll put um, the stream that I did uh, where I did play Alter Ego, you know, just like, I guess, two days ago. I played like a mobile game called Alter Ego. That's just, you know, the same name. But anyway. <laughs> hmm. Alter Ego literally means another self, I believe. In the field of artificial intelligence, it is not uncommon to create different aspects of a personality. You can consider something like a pen name. Could you let me see, Makoto? With that Kyoko moved between me and the computer. She moved the cursor over the Alter Ego icon, and when she double-clicked it, wow, you could double-click an icon. <laughs> and the screen suddenly went dark. And then the voice spoke to us. Wow. Chihiro's face appeared, taking up the entire display. It's a ghost, Buddha, sweet baby Jesus. Save me. Calm down. It's not a ghost. Ah. And what is it? I'm sure we just talk to it. We'll find out. Tokyo began to type, hands blowing across the keyboard. What are you? And then... There you go. Well, here's Chihiro. As it turns out, you know. Well, well, well let's see. I guess this isn't the last time. It isn't the last time we see Chihiro's face. And I always get so embarrassed introducing myself. That voice, the tone, and everything. It's Chihiro. Alter ego. I've heard about this kind of AI program, but I've never seen one for myself. AI program. It's how Chihiro earned his title of Ultimate Programmer. The AI lives on the computer, and by repeating different tasks, it gains knowledge and grows bit by bit. Apparently, Chihiro used a support vector machine and reinforcement learning to develop it. Yes, eventually he came up with a breakthrough in artificial intelligence design. Support vector machine? Reinforcement learning? I don't know what this means. It might, it's all made up. I mean, as well, I mean, as science fiction as it is, you know, as AI is, it's we're getting scaringly close, you know, in real life, to something similar. We're not not to the point where we have like AI machines that are sentient, and you know, they take over the world by destroying humanity. But you know, I think, I mean, I think I believe Google or I don't know, some company or whatever, is working on like AI models and all that. So anyway. To put it simply, it's a learning method for computers. If you want to know more, just Google it, okay? Just Google it. Okay. Also, that's a, I think that's a meme as well. That's like a Japanese meme, you know? Just Google it. I think there, wasn't there like a song, like a Vocaloid song about that? Anyway. But if this AI continues to grow, it will become more than just a piece of software to help people. Some say that an AI like this might someday replace people. And that's why it's called Alter Ego. A fine choice, then, I must say. It can create memories, have thoughts, and grow up. The process isn't much different from how humans work. If you were to raise your own AI that way, it would make perfect sense to refer to it as your Alter Ego. A second perfect personality that can never forget or grow old. That's what Chihiro created. That's Alter Ego. It's, it's, it's like interesting, it's, it, well, it, it's a little convenient how everyone just thought of that, you know, everyone's just like, this is AI, you know, it could be, I mean, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> it's like, everyone just draw drew that conclusion really quickly is all I'm saying. Kyokyo, how do you know so much about this? No, no answer, just didn't answer my question at all. Anyway. So he fixed the broken laptop and put his own program on there. This is what this means, yes? That he brought the machine to this dressing room, but the mastermind would not be able to see it. Hmm, but you know, all this about master and whatnot, yes, yes. I believe I'm on fire. 
I thought you were only into 2 2D, dude. This is the most excellent 2D possible. But he's a guy and also a computer program. <laughs> Even better? Question mark? Oh, that aspect is no problem. That aspect. Anyway, let's talk to him a little bit more. Kill Kill typed away rhythmically. How much do you know about what's going on? Mm, I don't know. I think that's partly voice. I think I'll, I'll, he just said master. Anyway, master only gave me a general idea. But I do know that things have become very grave. He found himself caught up in this without warning. Kyokyo immediately shot out another question. Why are you here? Are you asking what Master had planned for me? Well, he wanted me to analyze the massive numbers of files stored on his laptop. I believe the files are related to the school, but the protection of them is surprisingly strong. So it's taking me a little longer than I thought. But here's what Master must have been thinking. The fact that the files are protected so tightly means they must contain some important secret. For example, perhaps, the secret of this school. While I was busy struggling to make a sound, Kyokyo pushed forward and asked her next question. How much longer until everything's unlocked? It's gonna be a while. But I'm definitely gonna do it, so you can just leave it to me. So because of how long it would take, he designed Ultra Eagle to handle the workload. Smart. It also means that the work remains uninterrupted even after his death. Once again, Kyokyo typed quickly. Keep it up, but be careful not to let the mastermind notice you. Don't worry, I've got a secret plan already, just in case. Actually, I can see what's going on using my built-in webcam, so if anyone suspicious shows up, I'll just scream for help real loud. Okay. Hey, well, I don't know. Can we... You know, can we hear that? You know, depending on where we are at the school. This is, the, this is like the... Well, this is not the first... This is actually the first floor. I was gonna say the second floor, but it's actually the first floor. I don't know. It's a pretty basic plan, I have to say. That's fine during the day, but nighttime is a concern. Huh? Why? Have you forgotten? All our rooms are completely soundproof. Once we close our doors, he can scream as loud as he wants, but we won't hear a thing. Okay, then how about once it's nighttime, we each take turns guarding the dressing room? There's a good chance the mastermind would notice us all going in and out of the dressing room like that. Then what can we what can we do? Once nighttime comes, I'll leave the door to my room open. Then there's no way I can miss Alter Ego yelling. But if you leave your door open all night then. There's a chance I may become a victim myself. I know. But I'm not as weak as you may think. I wouldn't go down without a fight, I assure you. There was an undeniable strength in her voice when she said that. She was totally confident she would be okay. That confidence was somewhat similar to Byakuya's tone, but at the same time different. Yeah, it had an entirely different feel for sure. Like someone who'd dro been dropped into a battlefield versus someone who'd been born on the battlefield, molded by it, born in it. I felt like that uh, that was the fundamental difference. I was put on my thoughts by the voice suddenly emanating from the laptop. Um, would you mind if I asked a few questions? I haven't seen Master for a while. When you got here, I thought it was him, but... Is Master... For a split second, Kyoko seemed to not know what to do. But she recovered just as fast and quickly began typing. Her answer was clear, concise, direct. Chihiro is dead. Mondo killed him. To be honest, I knew all along. I knew the chances that Master would survive this situation were very low. So I was prepared for this moment. Somehow, I, I feel kind of sorry for her. I can't even imagine how it must feel to lose your other self. <laughs> it is a simple computer program. It does not have feelings. <laughs> Are you sure about that? <laughs> anyway, that's enough for today. If we linger here too long, the mastermind will start to suspect something. And then Kyokyo typed one last sentence. I'll come back later. 
Yes, please do. It's a promise, okay? Bye-bye. The AI, the AI, the AI seemed totally different from when we first arrived. He seemed upbeat. Was it just because he was following his programming, or could he have actually been worried about us? Hmm. What's wrong, Hiro? Well, nothing. I was just wondering if we might be able to get this laptop online. Then we could call for help from the outside. You know, get some Wi-Fi. But this is this is just a dressing room. I don't think you can get online from here. No, no. Well, if we could take it out here and find somewhere that does have online access. Well, that's way too dangerous. The mastermind will find it in no time. Ah, uh, yeah, true. Yeah. This is no time for taking needless risks. For now, I'll monitor the progress of the file analysis. I'm confident we'll uncover some kind of clue once it's finished. This feels like a detour more than anything else, but I suppose it can't be helped. So well, for now, all we can do is wait for Alter Ego to finish his work. Dabe. So, should we get going? So, yeah. Indeed. <sighs> Goodbye! We'll be back, I promise! <laughs> uh. Come on, Hifumi, let's go. Stop getting a boner from, like, the computer. So, this, no? Okay. And we all left the dressing room. As soon as we were out in the hall, Hina let out a joyful shout. <laughs> Isn't it awesome? I ended up doing something totally awesome, right? And as if he'd been waiting for his cue... <laughs> dun -dun -dun -dun! Hina has gained some experience to level up! <laughs> so, what was this awesome something? Monokuma. <laughs> you guys all seem in remarkably good spirits. Did something happen? No, nothing in particular. Oh. Keeping secrets? No fair. I demand exclusive interview. Denied, denied, super denied. Yeah, just because you demand something doesn't mean we have to do it. Do it? You mean like, do it, do it? Wait, what, what do you mean, do it, do it? Yes. Ew, gross, you said do it. Wait, you said it first. <laughs> we were just talking about going to the bathhouse. We have had not a chance to relax in some time. Huh? Huh? <sighs> but unfortunately, the bathhouse is not divided into men and women sections. <laughs> so we decided to do rock, paper, scissors to decide which group would get it first. Ina won the match for us, and that's why we're all so pleased. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right. Speaking of which... Huh? Okay, boys, why don't you head on back to the dining hall or something? We're gonna take a nice long bath. Ah, jeez. What are we gonna do, right? We lost a uh, fair square, right? Ha <laughs> ha! ho ho! Well, lady, shall we go? Celeste didn't hesitate coming up with the ruse, and her poker face didn't even flinch. So she and the other girls headed back into the dressing room. Um... Nuts and damn it! We totally lost! Another day without going to take my very first bath here! What? Yeah, but tomorrow for sure. We'll definitely get that bath tomorrow. Okay, so should we head back to the dining hall now? Hold on! Something strange here, very strange. Strange? What do you mean? Huh. What's strange is, this is the perfect chance for you to sneak a peek. Huh? <laughs> That's... You're absolutely right. <sighs> I thought you were all about the 2D, man. <laughs> all of you need to shut up, sit down, listen to what I have to say. An opportunity like this doesn't come along very often is the ideal setting of a man's fantasy. I was forced to ask myself, should I sneak into the bathhouse like Monokuma said or just go quietly back to the dining hall? Okay, let's go. Okay, I don't know. Um, I, I know about this. I don't think I got it the first time, actually. I mean, this is just stupid. <laughs> this is like a dumb, and this is like a dumb fan server scene, I believe you can get if you have a certain item in your inventory. I can't, do I have it? I don't, I don't remember. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But you can unlock like a like a fan service scene, I guess. <sighs> Where you basically just see all the girls semi-naked. Hopefully you don't get banned naked. If you have a, a particular uh, item that you get from the gacha machine, you know. With the man's fantasy burning in my chest, I decided to head back to the bathhouse. <laughs> have fun in your man's fantasy. Have a smashing good time. We opened the door to the dressing room, silence is deaf, and peeked inside. 
it looked like the girls had already finished changing, gone into the bathhouse. I think I think that's what it is. You know, you have you have to have like a particular item to unlock this. You know, otherwise you wouldn't get this scene. I guess I didn't really pay attention if I had it or not. <laughs> I didn't really care. But anyway, uh, this is all stars alive. But apparently they decided to go in for real, making sure it was empty. We quietly made our way into the dressing room, the Forbidden Land. Good. So they really are taking a bath. Is this what Celeste meant about lying convincingly? Mr. Hagakure, please refrain from pointless whispering. We're deep in enemy territory here. We're going to peek on the girls. Like, just, just like, just full on crease. But don't worry about it, it's anime. It's just, it's just anime. We just laugh it off because it's not real, right? Uh, just up ahead is the bathhouse, and there awaits a great, dazzling passion. Good. Amazing. Can I talk to the laptop? What are you doing, Mr. Nike? There are no fantasies in there. We need to calm down and try and counting prime numbers. Ah, I just want to talk to the laptop, no? <laughs> hey, Mr. Nike, you're on point. I'm the point man. Be careful. Don't get us caught. If Ogre finds us, we'll be meeting up with AIDS in no time. Okay. I place my hand on the door leading into the bathhouse. I open it gently, inch by inch. I maneuvered my hand like a master craftsman to avoid making even the slightest sound. A little further, a little further, and then... Whee! On the other side of the thick rising steam, I saw... A CG of the naked. Good. At least they have towels. Funny how, like, Toko is... Oh, oh, we didn't even have a chance to, like, dwell on it. I guess. Oh, uh, I was gonna say Toko was like slipping there. Was, was Toko was there, right? She wasn't with us before, though. I don't know why she's there now. It seemed like she went back to her normal form and just, just just randomly just in in the middle of like like hurting herself, you know? Which <laughs> is like, not, is that, did anyone gonna help her? No. Okay, whatever. I'm not sure how to put it, but. I always feel refreshed after a job well done. Our 3D body is so bad in this new state, I suppose. <laughs> but still, I just can't believe it. Like, for serious. Ogre's a girl? <laughs> okay. Well, she had really, really strong back muscles. Look at them. You know, you've noticed this. Is... The muscles on her are quite, quite big. Was this really okay? Well, I look too, so I guess I'm going to have to say yes. This is illegal. We could be on trial now. Be executed. Meanwhile, we heard the buzzing of busy voices growing louder. The girls had finished their baths and joined us in the dining hall. Mm -hmm. Ah man, what a nice bath. <laughs> Getting a chance to stretch out and relax after all this time was a true pleasure. Yeah. Indeed. So Normally after a long bath, I like to make myself a nice protein coffee, but... Sorry, no time for that. That's what I figured. Huh? We were just saying in the bath how it was about time for you to get up to something. After seeing how happy we were, an evil little monster like you would never let that last for long. You're all so terrible to me. I don't know if he said that, but I don't know if Monokuma, you know, said the line, but... It was so cold and mean, even after I got presents for you all. Presents. Hmm. Have I got your attention? Uh -huh. boop, 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 boop. Let's head back to the gym where your presents await. No questions, no dilly dallying. Get a move on and everything will become clear. What is it? What are you scheming this time? He's probably going to repeat the same thing again. Providing us with a motive to get things moving. Again? I don't want to. I don't want to do this anymore. Me either. I'm like, totally dramatized. It's okay. We have Alter Ego. I'm sure he'll find something that'll help us. So for now, we have to just endure it. Come what may. Oh, here's Bya Byakuya, by the way, and Toko. With heavy feet, we made our way to the gym, but when we arrived, there was already someone waiting for us. If you kept waiting by the likes of you, rest assured if we had access to firearms, you'd be all dead. <laughs> okay. 
We can either shoot us all up. Can't do that. Byakuya, did you get here early? Huh. Did you forget how to walk? Is that why you're late? It's simple. Right foot, left foot, right foot. <laughs> mm, the same as always, I see. But on the other hand... Oh, she's back to her Debbie Doubt herself, huh? <laughs> I heard it was sound like a sneeze. Maybe she's back to her old self. <laughs> now she goes from manic to depressive whenever she sneezes. Seems kind of late to add that into the mix. <laughs> why does... Why does everyone keep making fun of me? I hope you all win the lottery and get hit by a bus. Uh, so we only want to say something mean then you can talk, huh? Go, go. Anyway, it looks like everyone's here. Yeah. She means. Whee. Less people, by the way, in this cutscene. <sighs> All right, what now? What's the motive now? Let's find out. It looks like everyone's here. So then, let's get started. Come on, out of it. What kind of motive have you prepared for us this time? Whatever you subject us to, we will not break. Yeah, that's right. We're not going to lose you ever again. You don't have to get so defensive. Calm down. I've decided to change things up a bit this time. Up till now, I've been using the whoosh of the north wind to get you all moving. But sometimes you got to use the sun to light a fire to someone's butt. <laughs> Ten million dollars, wow. Smack our rules. So that's the motive you prepared, is it? Ten million dollars is... It's not nearly enough. <laughs> it's like, yeah, Baku is like incredibly ultra-rich, so it doesn't really matter. When it comes to motives, money certainly is the gold standard, so to speak. Whether it's in the mystery novel or the real world. But... but there's no way we killed each other for money! She's right. You can't simply purchase a person's life. Well... Life insurance companies would beg to differ, but anyway. You can say 10 million or however much, I don't give a crap. Uh, for serious. Yeah, they're all right. Whether it's 10 million or any other amount of money. And not even just money, from now on, no matter what you do, we will kill our friends. Oh, come on. Stop trying to act tough. The most important thing is to live a pure and moral communal life. Okay. But Monokama disappeared, leaving his words on stage along with a massive sum of money. Mm. There's nothing to worry about, right? I mean, you know, you never know. Maybe somebody would, would, would want that money. I mean, it is a class. It is a classic motive. You know, in real life in particular. To kill someone for a lot of money. But to be honest for me, I've, I always thought about this, you know? You always think about like... I mean, not just not, not murder someone necessarily, but if you would find like a briefcase full of money, what would you do, right? I mean, a lot of people would say they would just take it. You know, that's the idea. Um, I mean, the the the, the uh, what, what's the word? Samaritan, Samaritan, Is that the right word? I don't know. You, you know, the the right thing to do, the the legal thing to do, is to take that briefcase. And give it to the police, but obviously, you know, people. I don't know. I think there's a joke about how, like, obviously, if you give it to the police, then probably the, you know, the money will probably get lost in the evidence locker, and and you know that money won't go anywhere. Um, I don't know. When I think about it, though, I just think how like dangerous it is. You know, I mean, if you think about it realistically, and this is beyond the scope of the hypothetical, I feel like, but if there was just a briefcase full of money, where do you think that money comes from? Especially in, in, in modern day, like no one's going to keep that much of cash in a briefcase unless they probably do some illegal operation, let's just say, you know, because I don't think 
that, that I mean that's the reason why you know a lot of um, uh, money is would be in cash is to like you know to keep it uh, uh, off the radar so to speak you know to like launder it or whatever so I imagine if there was a briefcase full of money in front of me like one day I would be scared, you know. I wouldn't want to take the money because I'll probably get my knee, my kneecaps broken, you know, by by like, like organized criminals or something, like the mafia. I don't know. That's what I think of anyway. And also, you would like you would like lose. I don't know. It's just so dangerous. Is it? What if you like like get caught with it or like somebody like you know notices that you have a lot of money and then they will probably just murder you for the money as well or like at least hurt you anyway. I don't know. It's just a lot of responsibility. To, like have that much money you know it, like if you're gonna have like some kind of like, i feel like some kind of deal you know to get money it's gotta be secure you know it's gotta like make sure it's been it's like enforced by like a contract or something you know otherwise it would just take it just willy-nilly i don't know it just seems dangerous anyway it's a random tangent so me personally if i was in this situation i would not want to murder for money i don't trust that money you know <laughs> Uh, nothing would go wrong, right? Nobody would kill a friend for money, right? I don't know if we're all friends, Asahina, but... <laughs> Have you so quickly forgotten the lesson from last time? You can't judge others by your own standard. Yeah, there might be someone here who is having money problems. Personally, I've earned over one million dollars from my gambling efforts. My life is comfortable. I don't know if you have access to that money, though. I don't, I don't know if she has access to that one million dollars though, you know, right now. Uh, he, he for me, what about you? I'm a super popular content creator. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I have a YouTube channel. I don't have any problem making enough to buy my comics and DVDs. <laughs> Just stop. Pressing others about their personal finances is ugly. <laughs> ugly? <laughs> don't worry. Either way, whatever's going to happen will happen without warning. That is the nature of this game. Oh, there you go. Yo, somebody get some money. Alright, well, we always see this message over again. I was gonna say, though, on top of that, by the way, the whole, like, you know, a bunch of money in the briefcase thing, how do you know that it's not co counterfeit, you know? When I, that's my also, that's my second thought. Like, it's My first thought is that it's probably criminal money, it's crime money. My second thought is that it's probably counterfeit, you know? And what, what if you're caught with that? You know, if, you, if you're caught using counterfeit money, that's even worse for you. Because how do you explain it, you know? You, you just found some money using it, you know? I don't know. Anyway. It's that time already, huh? Yeah. Before we separate, let me remind you. Starting tonight, I'll be leaving my room door open to make sure nothing happens to Alter Ego. But just because my door is open, don't assume that would make me an easy target. Or the predator may suddenly find itself the prey. Her voice was calm and composed, but it was clear she meant what she said. Uh, okay, okay, let's everyone just head back to our rooms. I don't think about that whole money thing, got it? Good, let's break. How's that? Pretty good, right, Taka? <laughs> right. Good. Amazing. As soon as I was back in my room, I crawled into bed. Money. There's no way that's gonna get anyone to kill anyone else. I told myself that, but deep in my heart, I was still troubled. You know, you said that the last two times. There's no way, you know, anyone will kill because of this. And then someone killed because of that. After all, I thought the same thing last time about having our secrets revealed. Even if the reason for it seems completely nonsensical, a murder can so happen. That's the lesson we learned. But this time, this time it's different. I'm sure of it. Because of the program Chihiro left behind, Alter Ego. We finally have some small hope to grasp onto. As long as we have that, then I'm sure. And I'm sure nothing will go wrong, right? Little kids have it so easy. Cause they can put little in front of their name and then right off the bat everyone thinks they're cute. 
Hmm, I wonder how that's translated Japanese. Maybe they say Chan, you know, Chan or something, or some kind of cu cutesy nickname, I guess. Oh, fine then. I want everyone to call, start calling me Little Monokuma. Okay, so is that, I, I, again, I wonder in the, in the Japanese translation, is it like Monokuma-chan, you know, maybe? Make it sound cute? See, just by adding that, my cuteness goes up by at least like 10%, right? Yeah, the world doesn't have nearly enough littles. More like little should lead to the salvation of the world. Or maybe not Chan, because Chan is like an honorific. Or maybe Chibi? Is that, or maybe he's saying Chibi. You know, it's like Chibi Monokuma? Or something? I don't know. Just imagine little arsonist, little war criminal, little destruction of the environment. Little hit and run, little death tax, little great depression. <laughs> death tax. Isn't that like a thing? I feel like... It's like a big myth, you know, how like if you die, you get taxed because of your death, but like actually... It's called something else, I believe. I, I think it's an American thing, I'm not entirely sure. But there's like a whole thing where people use the word death tax, but like it's not really accurate. Really, it only affects people who are like really rich, you know, and own multiple houses. That's what it really is, but anyway. Oh, well, he's Chris Satina? Chris Yes. No, I'm just reminded of Stein's Gate and how, you know, the main character said Christina. Christina this. Alright, it's morning. Omaira! Omaira! Wake the frick up! Well then, I guess I should head to the dining hall, and totally no, no one will die, right? Well, I mean, it's, it's probably too soon for people to die, right? Let's see. Let's go to the dining hall, see any updates, you know, what, what we're doing, any progress on Chihiro's laptop. Good morning, Sakura. Did you just wake up? Yeah. Waking up for a breakfast meeting is fine, of course, but getting up a little early is better. You can exercise in your room till nighttime ends. A big meal after working up a sweat is divine. Okay. Okay, fitness nut. Is that what you call someone like that? You know, someone who's just really into exercising. Uh. Hey, morning, Makoto. Good morning. You're kind of sweaty. Have you been exercising? Yep. Me and Sakura are doing our morning workout. Oh, but I didn't break our nighttime promise. I just ran around my room till it ended. Why don't you come with us the next time? I don't think I could keep up with you, Sakura. Oh, uh, seriously? Okay, then. We can do something in the rec room. I'm not good at much, but I do how to know how to play Othello. I'm not very good at that either, though. I don't like to think when I'm playing, so... Okay. You gotta think. Hmm. Anyone over here? Okay. I just want to double check. I mean, it seems like we could talk to some people along the way, so that's why I'm looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, good morning. Morning. <laughs> Actually, it's a great morning. A morning that has blessed my entire future. Really? It feels like any other morning to me. <laughs> Maybe you can't tell, but my soul is positively overflowing with strawberries today. <laughs> Well, I'm off! That was bizarre. I mean, even for him. He already is a weirdo. He's even more of a weirdo. Alright. I wonder, no, uh, probably not. I'm just, I'm just trying to think. I mean, last time I tried to like, look around, all around to see if there's anyone else could talk to along the way, but uh, I don't think the game does that. If we're just going to the dining room, they're not going to hide the characters anywhere else. Maybe. So the people here today are the same as yesterday. This is seven. Belkia and Toku are lost claws, but it looks like Takas decided to stop coming for good too. Uh, it's like he's just given up. For people who aren't as tight as he is, when you snap, you snap hard. I wish there was some way to make him better. Hmm. On another topic, Kill Kill, did everything go all right last night? Hey. Yes, I didn't have any problems. I went and checked on the laptop a little while ago, and there weren't any problems there either, but... Kyokyo seemed to hesitate, but... 
It's related to this case, so I suppose I should be blunt. I have to make a new rule. Using alter ego without permission is prohibited. Someone going in and out of the dressing room will be draw unwanted attention from the mastermind. I would have thought that would be obvious. Why do we need to make a rule about it? That's a good question. Do you have any thoughts on that, Hifumi? Uh, no, no, it's just like you said. We all need to be uh, very careful. <laughs> huh? Whatever. Let's just hurry up and eat. We don't have time to stand around flapping our lips. Jeez, why are you talking all pissed off like a pissed off Joe Sergeant all of a sudden? We ate breakfast in a rush, then headed back to our rooms. Huh? This is the music for free time, I think. What should I do today? I'll probably hang out with uh, Celeste, I think. I think we, I, as far as I know, we haven't fully, you know, maxed out our social link, I guess, with Celestia Ludenberg. So there's more to do with her, I think. Is she in a room? What did it say? I don't have anything I need to talk to her about right now. But I want to talk to her, though. I want to talk to her. Wait. Can I go talk to a laptop, I wonder? Is that an option? I don't know. Let's see. Last, last hope. Okay, well, that's it. I want to know where she would be. I don't know. I checked the room. Apparently, I said that we don't have anything to talk to her about, but I do want to talk to her though. That's the weird thing. Hmm. I mean, I guess my first thought is that she would be in the recreational room, maybe. I guess I should check there. I wonder if we have enough. Uh, Presence, you know, to give her. I don't know what kind of presence we should give her. I don't know. How many coins do I have? I might as well roll the gacha a little bit. Why not? You know, I used a lot of uh, coins the last time I used this. I guess I don't have to. I can't just go one by one. You might get dupes, but dupes are not exactly a bad thing, I guess. You can just go one by one. It says 38%, but like... The opposite of 38% would be... What? 62? So it's like a 62% chance you get something new, right? So still good chances. Also got the weird hand bra thing. But... So if you want to be like very efficient, I guess you would just go one by one. I feel like you get you get the most bang out of your buck if you just uh, you do single pulls. You know, you just do single pulls the entire time. That's what you do. You know, I believe you can get like a secret item. By the way. It's kind of like, it's, it's it's a little spoilers, so I guess I won't mention why, like what happens if you get this item, but there is a secret item again, in the gacha machine, that, uh, you know, it's interesting, it's not necessarily, it's not that interesting, but it, it, it shows you, uh, let's just say, an extra little bonus, I guess, of the game. It's not really, you know, directly tied to the plot, necessarily. Mono Mono! Gotta roll some Mono. Hmm, Bento. You know, at the new place, actually, I mean, since I moved here, there is, like, a, a mall nearby. It definitely, it's... I mean, I never went there yet, obviously because of COVID and everything. But it is slowly opening up and everything as well. And, you know, has a lot of interesting... has a lot of interesting, uh... uh stores. I guess, you know? I mean, it's not that interesting, it's just... Uh, basically, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is like there's stuff like a, like a sushi. I mean, there's a, su there's a sushi spot, like, right nearby. I can, like, walk to it, you know? It's pretty nice. Because I don't usually get to have sushi, you know, very often. Because, uh... Usually, the, the mall nearby, my old place, you know... It, it didn't have a lot of stores and all that. 
I mean, it had McDonald's, I guess, but, you know. Everywhere has McDonald's, I guess. I was just thinking, you know. It's like I saw that bento box. As an item that we got from this gacha machine. I was thinking of sushi. I was like, mm. I can't wait, you know, for like everything to go back to normal so that I can just eat sushi every day, right? <laughs> Probably not. And again, it's, it's, it's trash sushi though, you know? It's not like real sushi, I guess. You know, like a real fancy sushi around. It's, it's trash sushi. It's like fast food sushi, basically. Is how I would describe it, you know? Got a lot of weird items uh, in in the in the in the sushi place, though. You know, what do you call? It? I don't. Know, I won't say sushi restaurant. It's not really a restaurant, you know. It's basically the equivalent of fast food, but it's beyond the typical sushi stuff. A lot of like, I don't know. I don't know what we call it, but you know, like California rolls, you know, and all that, and like just just a lot of like blasphemous sushi rolls that I don't mind really. I'm not like a sushi purist or anything. In fact, I like you know. That kind of sushi, it's just trash sushi that's not meant to be taken. It's not like authentic or anything, but you know, things like like uh, California rolls, which are, I, I believe, you know, it use like imitation crab, mayo, and avocado or something, you know, it's not, it's not really like real sushi. But I like it, you know, it's, it's tasty. I don't, I don't hate it. But I would definitely say if you were like a sushi purist, that, that would just be blasphemous. <laughs> you, you wouldn't call it sushi, I guess. But I don't mind it. But yeah, that, that, but that's what I'm... Uh, talking about when I, I talk about like a nearby sushi place, you know, that kind of sushi. And obviously the typical stuff, you know, salmon or whatever. They also have like weird items in them. I mean, there's two places, I guess, but I, I've seen like weird items, you know, like I don't know what you call it. Uh, a very experimental items on their menu. There's like sushi tacos. <laughs> you know, that's just weird to me. There's like sushi tacos, sushi burritos, and sushi pizza. That's just weird to me. I don't... <laughs> I don't understand... Who would invent those things and whether or not anyone eats them, but... They're just really weird. Also, this guy's here as well. Get out of here! I'm hanging out with Celeste. She's cooler than you. <laughs> if it isn't d Rick Makoto... Should I hang with Celeste? Yes. Let's hang out and eat some sushi burritos, I guess? I don't know. He has no affection, by the way, on a personal level. So that's present? Yes. Alright. What would I give her? I don't know. Um, I wish you could- I, again, I wish you could scroll through these items a lot faster. Bird seed, bracelet, some perfume. She might like perfume. I don't know. A watch? I did buy a watch actually recently. My old watch was like it broke, and everything. I I know I, I and I know watches aren't exactly pretty popular these days. I, I think I ranted about it before, you know how like no nobody you know uses watches like wrist watches anymore. But I still prefer it uh, over like uh, taking out my phone every single time, you know, because I'm always scared. Like I, I don't want to like take out my phone every time. I mentioned before how like you know one person I saw one person like almost drop their phone, you know, at, at, at like a subway station and everything. It's just not very safe, I feel like, to take out your phone randomly, check the time every single time. I'd rather just have it on my on my wrist. Rather than take out something expensive like a, a smartphone. Hmm. Project Zombie. Prize Problems. Pagan Dancer. A mature game designed for, for the fun plane. Immortals. I never know how to like go back. Like, how do I back out? I'm not sure how to back out. You know, I like I want to see the description, but I want to like back out from the thing. Now, nah, whatever. Uh, takes zombies and slays the player. It's been off the cliff for a while. Fashion accessory, wash basin, also just random items from the trials. Eh. Eh. What was she like? I don't know. Mm. Here, have some perfume. Why not? I'll give perfume. I get the impression that she liked it. That's good. 
Uh, Mr. Makoto Naegi, what's with the formality? Mm. Well, you see, I was hoping we could talk. Just the two of us. Could you come to my room, please? Ah, yes. Your room? Nani. I'll be waiting. What am I supposed to make of this? <laughs> Inviting me to her room all of a sudden. And she seemed almost shy. No, I must have just imagined it. Okay. And this is when we max out the social link. No, um... I think what Celeste asked and headed to her room right away. Ah, yeah, so like I mentioned before, yeah, it's interesting how you, uh, you don't normally get to see inside everybody's room. She definitely has a lot of clothes. And there's a chandelier. <laughs> I'm glad you came, Makoto. So this is Celeste's room. Anyway, what's going on? Why'd you ask me to come here? I received the results. You see, Makoto, I'm pregnant. No, I'm... Results? <sighs> the child growing in my belly. It's yours. Oh, okay. I actually did not... I, I didn't remember uh, this dialogue at all. So I actually, I actually called it, even though I didn't, I didn't know, actually. I didn't know that was the same joke. <laughs> Wait, sorry. Wrong results. You can't just say stuff like that. Congratulations. You have moved up a rank. You are now C rank. Uh, C rank? Oh, I have a habit of ranking those around me. What kind of habit is that? The most common is D rank. I have no interest in D rank. Most everyone at the school fits in that category. The worst is F rank. If you're F rank, I pay a special organization to have you killed. Your very existence is unforgivable. I hope she's joking. She doesn't sound like she's joking, but I hope she's joking. Conversely, the very best is A rank. But among everyone I have met across all countries, I have never even found a B rank, let alone an A rank. So you being promoted to C rank is a very great honor. I see. Also, when you become C rank, you gain the right to become my official servant, a knight. Wow, I had no idea. I have knights all across the world. They're all quite obedient. I recommend you take me up on this offer. <laughs> her knights, as in her Twitter followers? No, um. If you do your very best as a knight, becoming the first B rank may well be within your grasp. Perhaps even A rank. That's when we get married. No, um. I can't be sure, but I feel like you may have the potential. I can never tell how much of what she says is a lie and how much is the truth. But after talking to her so much, I feel like maybe we understand each other a little better. So as a nice, please be prepared to give your life for me. I mean, that's how social links go, right? You get like, you max out their social link and the person is ready to die for you. No, it's, it's usually the way, other way around though. Uh, I haven't actually decided yet. Hmm. Definitely can't let my guard down around her. I guess I can call her my friend, but this is one friend I need to be careful with. I don't see that changing anytime soon. The report card has been updated. I got achievement. It's, it said the, the French disconnection. Increase my skill points. Wow. I left Celeste's room exhausted and dragged myself back to my own room. Well, there you go. So got some time. What should I do? All right. Oh, ding dong. Huh? Sounds like someone's here. Who could it be? I don't know. Let me just, uh, how do I check, like, I always forget the, I forget the, what's the button to, like, show, just tab, open transcript is F2, ah, F1, I always forget F1, I, I, it's a weird button, I don't know, F1, I just want to check real quick, also, I might as well save, just in case, since I'm here, I'm gonna save right here. I just want to look at, uh... I'm gonna turn the main menu. I just want to check if I maxed out, uh... Celeste? See, we have a star, so okay. So I think we maxed her out. So there's no point in... I, I think there's no point in, uh... uh doing any more free time with her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's a lot of references, by the way, to, like, a lot of manga when you hang out with her. 
she also ranks people that's funny but well i mean it's a kind of a big deal i i mean it's kind of a joke but also maybe it's a big deal you know she doesn't have a lot of a ranks or b ranks which might show that she doesn't have a lot of friends basically <laughs> i think that's what she means despite her like you know cold exterior she's actually maybe very lonely i don't know i mean then at least that's the idea anyway Okay, here's Taka. Uh, Taka! Is it true? Can I really see Chihiro? Huh? You mean Alter Ego? He's still alive. No, not quite. Let me see. I want to talk to him. Taka. The way he is now, there's no way I can explain what's going on to him. Tokyo said we're not allowed to use Alter Ego. But even so... I can't just leave him here like this. Okay, why don't we get going? Alright, so he's in our room. He wants to talk to Chihiro. It's not really Chihiro, I guess, but I guess he wants to talk to the victim of the last case. The victim of his uh, his best friend. I mean, I say best friend. I'm I mean, just like, I mean, I just, I always say this, like a lot of anime. You know, somehow they just met up for like a few days and suddenly they're best friends. I don't know. But you know, the best friend that that killed the victim and also got executed himself. Maybe he wants some closure. I guess we'll see. 